In this video, we're going to sketch the following polar curve for angles between 0 and 2 pi. So the polar curve we're interested in is r is equal to 2 sine of theta plus 1. And the first thing I just want to say right off the bat is where we actually want to sketch this polar curve or where a polar curve lives is on the xy plane. However, where we're going to start this video is actually making a sketch of what this function does looks like on the r theta plane. So we're going to sketch basically r versus theta of what this polar curve represents. All right, so let's get into that. And this whole um, starting point is to remind us what sine looks like and some of these popular angles about sine and how we can start manipulating sine to get closer to this r value that we care about. All right, so starting off here, this is a plot of sine of theta for angles between 0 and 2 pi. So a couple things to say right off the bat. Sine of theta is equal to 0 at theta equals 0. It's equal to 0 at theta equals pi. And it's equal to 0 again at theta equals 2 pi. Sine of theta takes on its maximum value at an angle of pi over 2. And that maximum value is a value of 1. Similarly, sine of theta takes on a minimum value, this time at an angle of 3 pi over 2. And its minimum value is equal to minus 1. Okay. However, this is not our our value we care about. We have two sine of theta plus one. So actually the next thing we're gonna do is take this sine of theta and scale it by a factor of two. Again, this is not the function r versus theta we care about. However, let's just think about what multiplying by a factor of two will do to this sine curve. So in essence, it's gonna take every value along this original sine of theta curve and multiply it by two. What that means is our amplitude of sine or the max value, instead of being equal to one, it will now be equal to two. It'll still happen at an angle of pi over two as well. And similarly, the minimum value, instead of being equal to minus one, it'll take on a minimum value of minus two now. And that'll still happen at the same theta value of three pi over two. The values in which sine equals zero were not affected. It still happens at zero, pi, and two pi. So multiplying that sine function by a factor two didn't change where sine equaled zero. All right, so this is again, this is not the function that we actually care about. It's two sine of theta plus one. So what is the plus one going to do? Well, the plus one is going to take every single point along our sine curve and add one to it. So every single point along this curve, if you imagine, is just going to be shifted upwards one unit. So this sine curve is still going to take, or the two sine of theta plus one, is still going to take the same sinusoidal shape. It'll just be shifted upwards one unit. So let's take a look at what that resulting curve looks like. All right, so this is our sine curve shifted upwards by a unit of one. So this is two sine theta plus one. Again, where we previously had sine was zero, we now have a value of one because of that plus one. Similarly at the pi as well and at the two pi. All right, <clears throat> so at this junction, we have a sketch of our polar curve on the r theta plane. This is not the polar curve because it's not in the xy plane. So we're going to take this information of what we sketched in the r versus theta plane and use it to sketch our polar curve where it lives in the xy plane. And the way in which we're going to do this is first break this curve now into a series of points. So you might consider a point at theta equals zero, maybe a point where uh, theta equals pi over 2, a point theta equals pi, 
maybe another point at three pi over two, another point at two pi. However, there's two other points that I wanna highlight. And these are the points in which we have an R value equal to zero. And it happens twice. Once it happens between the angles of pi and three pi over two, we have an we have a R value of zero. And it happens again between the angles of three pi over two and two pi. Our R value again equals zero there. So what we're going to do next is really ask ourselves, what happens point to point? As in, what happens to our polar radius between two successive points that we've highlighted in this R versus theta plane? All right, so let's get going with that. All right. So the first thing, at theta value of zero, we have an R value of one. And at pi over, or pi over two, we have an R value equal to three. So we could plot these two points individually. So again, at theta equals zero, we have an R value of one. Theta equals zero is along the positive x-axis somewhere. And it tells us we want to move out a distance of one. So at the angle of zero, we're moving out a distance of one that places us at that point. Now at an angle of pi over two, pi over two is straight up in the air. So it's along the positive y value or y axis. And we're told we're a unit of three away from the origin. So one, two, three from the origin. Next, we can ask ourselves, well, what happens between those two points? Well, between all angles of zero to pi over two, our R value just keeps increasing. So angles of zero to pi over two, our R value is getting larger and larger. So that's for all of these angles. So as our R value gets larger and larger from one to three, we might be able to connect this curve in that way. All right, next let's ask ourselves, what happens between the next two points? Again, the first point we already have, that's, well, pi over two. And we're told we are three units from the origin at pi over two. Pi over two is the angle straight up along the positive uh, y axis, and we're three units away. Next, we're at this angle of pi, where an angle of pi is all the way along the negative x-axis, and we're told in this case, we are a distance of one away from the origin. R is equal to one. So what this point looks like, again, we're along the negative x-axis, that's an angle of pi. We are one unit away, so we are here. So our R again goes from R equals three to R equals one, so it's decreasing. So in that angular region from pi over two to pi, our R value is decreasing. So we can draw those two lines. All right, now let's keep going. Say an angle of pi, again, angle of pi is straight along the negative x-axis. We are again a unit of one away. This is the same point that we had before. However, the next point that we have our, is equal to, our R value is equal to zero. R equals zero means we are back at the origin. And what we know about that point is R is equal to zero, and it happens at some angle in between pi and three pi over two. So you might imagine that is, okay, some angle in between. What that means is our R values between those angles, if they're getting smaller and smaller from R equals one, to R equals zero. So our curve could be doing something along those lines. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is actually look at, let me just color that in, is actually look at the remaining positive R values, which happen from some angle, this time between three pi over two and two pi, and the angle of two pi. 
So again, we're starting off at some value where r is equal to zero in that last region there. And then again, at the angle of two pi, our r value is equal to one, r equals one. An angle of two pi is all the way around the xy plane and back along the positive x-axis. So again, angle of two pi is all the way all the way around the xy plane and all the way somewhere on the positive x-axis. And we're one unit away. So what that tells us is we are one unit away. We are back at that point. All right, so what can we say between those two points? Well, Similarly to the other point where r equals zero, this happens at some angle in between three pi over two and two pi. So you could imagine that we could place, and eh, there's some angle in between where r equals zero, but then from r equals zero at that angle to two pi, we are growing. So all angles in between there are our values increasing from zero to uh, basically one. So we could be doing something along these lines. All right, that leaves us with this remaining section down here. And the thing that I want to highlight right away is this section, all the R values are negative. So this is the way I approach these types of sections, is I actually think about the curve what if that curve was positive? So I'll just take this point, basically reflect up here. So what I'm drawing now is not really the curve that we care about, but that'd be the curve if it was positive. The reason I'm going to do that is because I know whenever I have a negative R value or negative polar radius, we reflect across the origin. So we end up in the opposite quadrant, basically, across the origin and or in other words, we're adding pi to every polar angle. So first let's think about what happens between r equals zero and three pi over two. If we're thinking about say this imaginary now, what we're envisioning positive r values that we know we're gonna reflect at the end of the day. Well, r equals zero at whatever this angle was between Uh, pi and three pi over two. And at three pi over two, this fake R value is one. So we'd be down here. So you'd imagine we could have a curve that looks something along those lines. However, because all of those R values are actually negative, again, they're negative, what that means is instead of being plotted down here, we would reflect all those points and they'd end up in the first quadrant. So the real curve, what it must look like is we reflect this point across the origin, we end up there, and we reflect every single point along this curve into the first quadrant. Okay, so that takes care of one of those sections. Let's think about this remaining section now. And again, we're thinking about plotting the positive R values that don't really exist, but they'll help us plot the actual curve in which has negative R values because we can just reflect this positive R value thing across the origin. So again, at three pi over two, we're thinking we're a one unit of one unit away. So you can imagine we're down there, R equals one, the angle three pi over two is straight down. And now at some angle in between three pi over two and two pi, our R value goes back to zero. So what that means is we must be curving back at that angle for all angles in that region. We must be curving back into the origin.
So we must be doing something along those lines. However, again, since that is really thinking about what if this R value is positive and our real curve has negative R values, we would reflect this entire curve here into the across the origin, and that would reflect across here. So where this curve actually looks like, again, we'll take that point, we flip it across the origin, it lands us up here. We know we land back at r equals zero. And then these points, when we flip them, they'll all end up there. So this is what a sketch of our polar curve looks like in this case in the xy plane. Okay. And again, we can think about this as, well, at an angle of zero, our r value is one, an angle of zero, we're somewhere along the positive x-axis and we're one unit away, so that lands us here. At pi over two, we're in r value of three, Pi over two is the angle straight up along the positive y axis. We are three units away from the origin. That places us there. At an angle of pi, we are r equals one. An angle of pi is, well, along the negative x axis. And we're one unit away. That lands us there. And there's two points in which our r value is equal to zero, where we end up back at the origin. And in between where r equals zero, we basically loop through the first quadrant and through the second quadrant to get back to zero, r equals zero. And then from that, whatever that angle was where r equals zero between three pi over two and two pi, and the angle of two pi, we, we increase back to one. So our r grows from zero over to one. 